Secrets are unavoidable in Kubernetes. Your application might need a secret to authenticate to a database. Crossplane, for example, might need a secret to authenticate to your AWS or Azure or Google account. Canico might need a secret to authenticate to a container image registry to push images, and so on and so forth. It is almost impossible to use Kubernetes properly without having secrets. So you need Kubernetes secrets, and the real question is, how do we manage those secrets? One option could be to just create a Kubernetes secret by executing something like kubectl and the namespace and create secret, generic secret, or any other type of secret, give it a name, and say from literal values, or it could be from a file, or there are a couple of ways you can create secret. But what really matters here is that you need to execute a command to create a secret, and then what happens then? You lose that secret. You cannot reproduce that easily unless you memorize the secret. And that's just silly. Or you can say, hey, I'm going to put the secret into a file and just say kubectl apply and then the file name and the path to the file with the secret. But that's even worse. It is very easy to make a mistake and push that secret to a Git repository and then everybody can see what your secrets are. Everybody would be able potentially, or at least those with the access to Git repository, to do some serious, serious damage. Now, a better way to manage secrets, especially if you want to push them to a Git repository, is to use sealed secrets. And then you can do something like kubectl, create secret, and then make sure that it's a dry run, and then pipe that to kubeseal, which will encrypt the secret, and then store it in a file which you can easily push to a Git repository because that secret is encrypted. Only those with the access to the Kubernetes cluster where kubeseal or sealed secrets encrypted can be decrypted and so on and so forth. So if you're sure that nobody has access to your Kubernetes cluster, at least no malicious user, then this is relatively safe and it is very GitOps friendly. So please, please, please use sealed secrets if you think that they're enough that they're secure enough they're definitely better than creating secrets directly or putting them in a file unencrypted so sealed secrets are great and if you're not familiar with them then uh, please watch the video the video is somewhere there look at it uh, you can check it out don't stop watching this one uh, watch that video later because i'm going to present something different instead of sealed secrets, something even more secure and more adaptable to your needs. Now, if you're a type of person who prefers keeping secrets somewhere else, then we are going to see how we can manage secrets in Kubernetes clusters, no matter whether they're stored in AWS Secrets Manager or Google Secrets Manager or Azure Key Vault or HashiCorp Vault or any, almost any other secret storage. So, what we are going to do today is say, hey, you keep your secrets wherever you are keeping them normally, but we are going to figure out how we can pull those secrets from secret managers and push them, put them into Kubernetes clusters in a safe way. And the solution is called external secrets. It is a Kubernetes operator. It integrates with almost all external secret management systems. It reads information from external APIs and automatically injects the values from your secrets into Kubernetes secrets. So no more keeping secrets in files, no more encrypting them and then putting them into files, even though that's a good choice with sealed secrets. But if you don't want to, that's fine. And no more creating them directly by saying, hey, my username is this and my password is that. For the sake of this demo, I have a secret one, one is enough, stored in Google Secrets Manager or whatever the name is. But the same logic would apply no matter where your secrets are. And I have over there a secret that I want to inject into my Kubernetes cluster. And to do that, I need to create two types of Kubernetes resources. The first one is cluster secret store. That's the definition that will tell external secrets how to find the secret 
that we are looking for or to be more precise how to find and use external secret store and all i'm doing really here is actually two things i'm specifying what is the existing secret that provides authentication to my google cloud account and i have a project id that tells external secrets where the secrets are what is the google cloud project now, as I said before, in Azure, it will be slightly different and in AWS different. So check the documentation if you're not using Google Cloud. But the logic is still the same. We have cluster secret store that tells external secrets how to access secrets stored somewhere. So let me apply that with kubectl apply, file name is secret store, YAML. And then we can take a look at the second definition, the second resource type. Now, this one called external secret is telling external secrets how to sp access specific secret. What is the secret that we are interested in? Now, there are three important sections in this definition. The first one is secret store reference, which tells the external secret how, what is the reference to the definition that tells it how to access the store itself. That's the reference to the previous resource. Then we have target. What will be the target secret that should be created? And in this case, I'm calling it PostgreSQL. And finally, we have data from. That's the information from where to fetch the secret. What is the name in this case of the secret in Google Cloud that it should get? So let me apply this file as well, a bit kubectl, namespace is ATM, and then I want to apply something defined in external secret.yaml. And that's it. The secret is now in my cluster. And I can double check that that's really true by executing kubectl, the namespace is iTeam, and then get secrets. And there we go, PostgreSQL is now inside my cluster. And if you don't believe me, if you think that I'm somehow cheating, I can output the secret itself with kubectl, get secret, PostgreSQL, and then output it as a YAML, let's say. And then we can see whether it's really true, whether it's really there. And you can see that there is endpoint and the name and the password and the port and the username. Those are all pieces of information that I need to authenticate to my database that were transferred from Google Cloud Secret Storage into my cluster. And if you want to access any specific part of that secret, we can do something like kubectl, the namespace is whatever it is, get secret, PostgreSQL, and then output JSON path, and then path, which is in this case data and password, and base64 decode, because all the secrets in Kubernetes clusters are base64 encoded, and then you will see, that's my secret. You will never find out. That's not a real secret. But that reminds me, hey, you might want to join this channel and sponsor this channel and uh, subscribe and like the video. Do that, please. If you already got this far, I know you want to do it. Unless you did it already, and then it's okay. Just let's move on. Now, let's see what happens if I modify the secret in Google Cloud in this case. What will happen if I do that? So I will copy that secret, create a new version, modify it slightly. I will modify the password and store it and save it in Google Cloud. I'm not touching my Kubernetes cluster. No hands, look at it, not touching my cluster. So let me retrieve the password again and uh, it says you will never find out. And that's normal because it takes a few moments until the next iteration of external secrets is executed and it fetches it again. So let me repeat the command one more time. And now look at that. You see that the output is different. Now it says, how about this? with a question mark, right? So it updated, it is monitoring constantly the secrets in wherever we're keeping the secrets and then continuously updating those in a Kubernetes cluster. I mean, not continuously updating, but updating whenever it discovers that there is a change in the destination secret. As a result, my Kubernetes secrets are always up to date with the secrets I'm storing somewhere else. Now you might be wondering, hey, does it support my secret storage? And the answer is relatively straightforward. Let's go to the documentation and take a look at providers. And over here, we can see that there are secrets managers, support for secrets managers 
in AWS, in Azure, in Google, in IBM. There is a keyless, which I don't know what it is. There is HashiCorp Vault, probably the most commonly used uh, secret storage. There is Yandex, GitLab, and Oracle, and one password and webhook. So we can integrate with secrets that are not supported out of the box. Fake. Kubernetes, we can move Kubernetes secrets from one place to another. And there is Senha Segura, which I have no idea what it is, but it must be good. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's not. Now let's talk about pros and cons of using external secrets. This is going to be embarrassing. I have no cons. I have nothing. Actually, I do have one. I thought about there is one thing that I don't like about external secrets. Actually, it's not that I don't like. There is something missing. It can fetch secrets from somewhere, but it cannot push Kubernetes secrets to external secret stores. There are quite a few cases where I generate secrets in a Kubernetes cluster and I might want to store them somewhere else externally, maybe even store them there and then propagate them from external secret store to other Kubernetes clusters. A good example would be Crossplane. With Crossplane, I'm generating secrets of databases and clusters and what's not, and I would like those secrets to be pushed to my external secret storage or store, and I cannot do that with external secrets. But I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that the team is working on that feature. And if they do that, and if it works well, then external secrets will be doing everything I needed to do with my external secrets, but pull them and push them to different stores. So that's it. Everything is amazing. Everything is great. It works amazingly well. And there is only one negative thing, one missing feature, not necessarily negative thing. Try them out and let me know what you think. What are you using to manage your secrets?